There's some really uh, pretty extreme airstrips out here. They seem to be very excited about learning about God. There are no other missionaries living within 300 miles. Be in the air over the river short mile. You don't see the airstrip until you're about 200 feet above the ground. You know, in America, this would be just the forest of the poor. We have crossed halfway around the world to the island of Borneo. Borneo is one of the world's most isolated and remote areas, and today it still remains largely undeveloped. Indonesia's province, Kalimantan, occupies the largest portion of the island of Borneo, with Malaysia to its north. The geographical and logistical barriers of Borneo are forbidding. Dense rainforests, impenetrable mountains, arduous terrain, and the absence of roads leave villages isolated. Access is not only limited to the gospel, but also to life-sustaining services, such as health clinics and education. It was because of environments like this that Mission Aviation was created. In 1943, a handful of World War II pilots started looking for ways to use their skills to help spread God's love. Out of that desire, Mission Aviation Fellowship was formed. In 1969, MAF began to serve mission groups in the emerging indigenous churches of Kalimantan. And today, a team of MAF pilots, along with their families and support group, continue to provide vital aviation and communication services to these hard-to-reach people. Being a, a missionary pilot is a, it's an amazing uh, opportunity to minister because the, uh, the work we do at the airplane touches people's lives uh, at a number of different levels. This is a Cessna 206 and uh, it is the workhorse of the MAF fleet. MAF has, I think, 40 or 50 of these airplanes worldwide. Uh, it can seat six people. One of the modifications that MAF uh, does with the planes, they, they install a cargo pod and we put about 300 pounds of cargo down there, which is nice because if the plane's full up top, we can just shove stuff down there. And uh, we'll put whatever we can fit through the door into that cargo pod. So we've had <laughs> pigs in there, or dogs, or ducks, or uh, whatever, whatever you can do in there. Anytime I fly with David, um, I have a renewed appreciation for what he does and for the challenges he's, he faces every day. You know, I think of it as, oh, he just gets in the airplane and he flies off and, and comes home. And the pilots, they're safe, but they, they really put themselves out there flying over the jungle every day. MAF goes to great lengths to make sure that we have very good engines, new engines. Um, so we rarely have any engine problems. But uh, when something like that happens, where you have one cylinder that starts to hiccup, I tell you what, it gets the pilot's attention pretty quick. My husband flies into villages that couldn't be reached otherwise, except for maybe a long boat ride on a treacherous river, or maybe a, a, an even longer walk through a very dangerous jungle. The need in Indonesia is huge because um, it's vast areas of jungle and uh, transportation is extremely difficult. So we're serving the national church here. Without uh, mission aviation, they'd be essentially cut off from the outside world. Option set, check was complete. I think that being the wife of a missionary pilot is exciting because my husband gets to go out and do what he loves and that he just gets energized by helping people and so when I see him come home he's exhausted but for me it's really really exciting for me to see him just really content with where God has him. The reason we chose to come and serve people here or to serve people at all is, is based out of the biblical principle that we are blessed so that we can be a blessing. I know Paul really enjoys spending time interior and just being encouragement to people, hanging out with people and just getting to know them on a personal level and um, just to encourage other fellow believers around the world. Bye. 90% of the airstrips that we go
go into out here are well above, you know, the average airstrip that you would go into in America. Yeah, there's there's some really um, pretty extreme airstrips out here. You know, they're short, they're flat, some that go up hills, we got some that go up to 23%. Some are dirt, some are grass. Um, all of them have pretty much unusual approaches into them. You get to airstrips like these, you uh, never actually really want to get comfortable with the airstrip because they can always bite you if you get uh, lazy. Today is a, is a significant day for Chris and Jardin because it's his first opportunity to fly solo interior and it represents how many years of preparation? About 10 years of preparation leads up to this moment right here where he gets to fly interior without somebody else riding along with him. So it's, it's really significant and it's a, it's a great accomplishment. So in keeping with our local tradition here, we're going to give him some captain's bars. Craig, you want to pin him on him since you were his checkout pilot there? It's exciting. I woke up excited this morning. Congratulations. Well, I think one of the neatest things I can say about missions today is it's different perhaps than most young people imagine or stereotype. Just because you're not a preacher or a teacher doesn't mean there's not a spot around the world for you. You could be a pilot, a mechanic, a doctor, a nurse, a teacher. You could be a whole lot of different things and there's a spot for you. Working here, doing what I'm doing, it counts for something. I'm not just working for myself. You know, I'm here to help the people of Kalimantan in the name of Jesus. And that's, I think that's something that's very valuable in ministry. When you hear people who've been helped by the airplane, like, um, brought out by, uh, for emergency, medical emergencies, and knowing that without the plane there would be no way for them to get adequate medical care, all of that just helps us know that what we're doing is, is important. When we come back, Chris makes his first solo flight into the interior. Plus, we head into the city of Tarakan to see the needs of the people and the outreaches of MAF. A few months ago, we started a story time for the kids in our neighborhood. 